Sweden officially joins NATO, becoming Alliance's 32nd member. President Joe Biden delivers 2024 State of the Union. Affirming women's position in the modern society. Hello everyone, you're watching today's news on NTV channel. My name is Dunn. Let's get started. Sweden officially become the 32nd members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, after Prime Minister Christensen handed over the accession documents to the U.S. government at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. We'll now deposit Sweden's... Unity and solidarity will be Sweden's guiding lights as a NATO member, Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Christensen said in a statement delivered in Washington, D.C. after a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. This is a historic moment for Sweden, for our alliance and for the transatlantic relationship, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said as he received Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Christensen's accession documents. Sweden has advocated military neutrality for decades, but changed its stance after the Russia-Ukraine war broke out in February 2022. Sweden and Finland applied to join NATO in May 2022. On the morning of March 8, Vietnam time, U.S. President Joe Biden delivers 2024 states of the Union address to Congress. This is President Biden's last federal message before the presidential election in November. The State of the Union address reviewed the achievements of his first term, while also warning about what he saw as threats to the country's existence. In his State of the Union address, President Biden focused on his administration's achievements over the past three years, especially in the economy as well as his vision for America's future. Regarding foreign policy, Mr. Biden Biden called on Congress to pass a long-stalled military aid package for Ukraine and reaffirmed that the U.S. will not send troops to fight in Ukraine. On the morning of March 8, the Provincial People's Committee met with the Socio-Economic Advisory Group to talk about plans and trial programs for Nghe An to follow the guidelines set out in the Polybro's Resolution 39. This resolution focuses on the construction and development of the province up to 2030, with a vision extending to 2045. At the meeting, based on the orientations and suggestions of the Provincial Party Secretary, the Chairman of the Provincial People's Committee requested members of the advisory group to contribute opinions and clarify five groups of tasks and nine important work contents. He asked the advisory group to contribute their ideas to the implementation process of the project to arrange administrative units at district and commune levels for the period 2023 to 2025, implementing three key projects, building Kualo Deep Water Port, upgrading and expanding Vin International Airport, Kynlap LNG Thermal Power Project, orientation to building Gay and Inter a Center for Fruit Trees and Medicinal Herbs. The Provincial People's Committee will organize working meetings with the advisory group on each specific content. At the same time, the province will continue to create the most favorable conditions for the advisory group to complete their tasks and contribute more to the province's development goals. Coming up next are some updated news. The Vietnamese embassy in Egypt and Djibouti is taking citizen protection measures for Vietnamese sailors working on the Barbados flagged True Confidence cargo ship which was struck by a Houthi ballistic missile off the coast of Yemen on March 6. Ambassador Nguyen Hoi Dung said that one of the four Vietnamese crewmen on the ship died in the attack and his body is now kept at a hospital in Djibouti city. Meanwhile, three alive crewmen were evacuated to Lori Hotel, Djibouti city with the help of India's Navy. There were 20 crew members, consisting of 15 Filipinos, 4 Vietnamese, and 1 Indian, on board the True Confidence when the Houthi forces fired a missile at the ship. The strike also resulted in the deaths of 2 Filipinos. Up to now, 28 tourist destinations in Nghệ An have been recognized by the Provincial People's Committee. Vinh City is home to five tourist destinations, four destinations in Khon Quang District, three destinations in Nam Dan District, Hung Nguyen, Do Luang, Dien Zhou, and Yen Thang Districts, each have two tourist destinations. 
Its locality has one tourist destination including Nhi Lộc, Thanh Trương, Tân Kỳ, Nghĩa Đàn, Quy Châu, Quế Phong, Tương Dương District and Hoàng Mai Tao. The recognition of tourist destination aim to preserve and develop tourism resources, enhance promotion and attract organizations, individuals and businesses to invest in tourism activities. According to the Center of Overseas Labor under the Ministry of Labor, Invalids and Social Affairs, a Korean language proficiency exam for candidates looking to go to South Korea for work in the employment permit system will last from March 5th to 26th in Hanoi and Da Nang. Over 8,650 candidates from 53 cities and provinces have signed up for the test, aiming for the jobs in sectors like agriculture, fishery and construction. Among them, the localities with the highest number of people signing up is Thanghua at more than 1,900 candidates, followed by Nghệ An at more than 1,500 candidates, Hà Tinh at more than 1,400 candidates. Those passing the Korean language proficiency test will have their working skills put to the test in another examination from April to July. Today, women are stepping up to assert their roles across various facets of society. The significant contributions are shaping the overall development of their homeland and country. When it comes to the mobile police force, many people think that it is a special job only for men. However, female Lieutenant Nguyen Kain Fung has worked in the police career for the past 12 years. I'm in love with my job. Therefore, I often arrange housework and office work in a reasonable way. Belonging to the 9X generation, Musvo Tuthao is the deputy director of a large hotel in Vin City. She herself has always determined that she must not only be beautiful and well-groomed in appearance but also regularly improve her professional knowledge and skills. Women should be beautiful and intelligent. Intelligence make my work easier. Regarding beauty, we need to have a neat appearance to work with customers. The successful women have strengths like capacity and creativity. However, the common point among women is that they use family as a fulcrum to overcome difficulties and work pressure. It's also the thought of Ms. Nguyen T. Jialin, party secretary of Hung Hoa Commune, Vin City. I think my family is the fulcrum for me to complete my job well. Follow the development trend, modern women have been creating their own influence by asserting their role and position in family and society. That is a way for them to preserve and promote the women, value for future generations. This is the end of the show today. Thank you for watching.